Hey there, welcome back. In case we haven't met yet, my name is V and I love to code the heck out of Squarespace and teach other designers how to do it too. For this week, I have a really cool trick that I want to share with you. We're going to be building drop downs inside the description area of auto layouts in 7.1. Now, this customization is something you're going to be able to implement in multiple projects, and the setup is actually fairly simple to achieve. The only thing that you need to keep in mind is that we will require a script. So that means that you need to be able to add code to the code injection section of your site. Other than that, the steps are fairly easy to follow. So if you're interested in learning how to make this happen for your current client project, make sure to keep on watching. So here I have a 7.1 site and right now I'm looking at an auto layout section that I've set to the list layout. So I'm going to show you here how I have things set up so that you can set them up the same way. And then we can go ahead and get started with the code. So here, if I go into edit content, you're going to see that inside the design, I have this set to simple list. And then as far as content and everything, you can go ahead and use any content that you want. I just have an image here and then I have the name of the person because this is supposed to be a team page. We have a little bit of text up here. And then the important part really comes down to how we're going to set up this part of the description. So if we take a look here, you're going to see that I have a little bit of text here. So I just called this one read bio because I just want the rest of this information that I have down here to be hidden inside the drop down. So depending on what information it is that you want to showcase inside the dropdown, you just need to make sure that you have that set up in here, however it is that you want to display it. And then the important part is to actually create this little title here. Now, the cool thing about auto layouts in 7.1 is that we can actually use the same kind of markup that we can use for markdown blocks. So here, what we can do is just create a specific heading so that we can easily point to it through the script. So what I have here is an H6 and the way that you can create an H6 or a heading six in here or any other type of heading really is by including a specific number of pound signs. So here, if we have one, two, three, four, five, six pound signs, and then we write something in here, this is going to turn automatically into an H6, which is what I have up here. If you wanted to create a different type of heading, so let's say that we want to create maybe like an H5, it would be one, two, three, four, five, and then we leave a space, and that is just going to allow you to create an H5. So this is a really cool trick that we can use to be able to create the sort of drop down trigger very easily within this description section. So what I have in here is, like I said, an H6, and then I just have to add it to this last element that we have in here, this last slide. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go ahead and decide that this is the part that's going to be sitting inside the hidden dropdown. And so right before it, I'm just going to go ahead and add my text. So I'm just going to call this read bio, and then we can go ahead and add the pound sign. So one, two, three, four, five, six, add a space. And now we have an H6 in there. And if you're not entirely sure if you added the right number of pound signs, or if you just want to double check that you have your specific type of heading added in there, you can always check it inside the inspect element tool. So you're going to see that if I go in here, I have an H6 created in there. All right, so now that we have all of the text set, what we're going to do is go into the code injection section of the site and we're going to be adding in this script. So I'm going to go in here into this is settings and then advanced code injection. And keep in mind that this customization is going to require the jQuery library. So if you don't have this code or something similar on your site already, make sure to grab this part of the code from the blog post that comes with this tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and paste in the script that I already created in here. And then I'm going to walk you through what it does. So basically what we're looking for first is that trigger. So the first thing that we need to have in place in here is the actual thing that we're going to be clicking on to be able to open or close that dropdown. In our case, it's going to be the H6 that is located within the description of Autolist. So you're going to see in here that I'm targeting the H6. So here we have the H6 element that are sitting within this container called list item content description. So you can see here that says list item content description. So basically, I'm just looking for those heading sixes that I have in there inside the description area of auto layouts. And then once I click on any of them, two things are going to happen, which is this function and this function. 
Now what the first function is doing in here is just making sure that once you click on this, so once you click on that particular heading six, everything that comes after it, so everything that is next to it inside the HTML, remember that all of these functions always have to do with what you see inside the HTML. So here I have an H6 and what is next after this H6 is this P element. So it's going to look for that next thing, next, that next element, whatever it is that it is sitting there, and then it's going to toggle it. So this slight toggle is just going to make sure that if the thing is visible, it's going to hide it. And if the thing is hidden, it's going to show it. And now the other thing that is going to happen at the same time is that once we click on this, so again, on that H6 inside the description area of auto lists, is also going to toggle a class called open dropdown. Now, the name of this class doesn't really matter. This is just one class that I made up in here. So you can change it if you want to. Just make sure that you change it in the CSS as well. And basically, the reason why I'm adding this in here is because I want to be able to modify the way that that read bio link looks like once the drop down is open. I'm just going to make a very, very tiny modification to it just to add a little bit extra here. And by adding this class or by toggling this class on and off, I'm going to be able to achieve what it is that I want to achieve. So you're going to see that now if I have these two things in place, if I save this, nothing is really going to happen on the screen. But now if I click on any of the read bio links, you're going to see that both things are going to happen. So the visible one is that the content or whatever it is next to that H6 is going to disappear or appear depending on the initial state that we're seeing on the screen. And then if we take a look here inside the inspect element tool, let me shrink this down so that we can see better. If you take a look here at the H6, you're going to see that if I click on it, this class of open dropdown gets added. And then if I click back on it again, the class disappears. So now that we have everything working right with the script, let's go ahead and move on to the CSS side so that we can actually style this the way that we want it to display. So I'm going to close this and then I'm going to move on to the sign and custom CSS in here. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do here is basically hide the content on load. We don't want the content to show initially. We want it to show once we click on that read bio. So we're going to go ahead and target everything that is after our H6 and we're going to hide it via CSS. And then once we click on that read bio, that is when it's going to show. So to be able to hide everything that is coming after that H6, what we're going to do is we're basically going to use the same selector that we were using in the script inside our custom CSS window. So we're going to target that H6 inside the list item content description. So I'm just going to grab this. So now that we're pointing to the H6 inside that description in the auto lists, what we're going to do is we're going to select everything that comes after it. So in order to do that, we're going to be using this little tilde sign, which is going to select any sibling that comes after the thing that we're selecting in here. So the H6 that we're pointing to in here. And then because we don't really know what those elements are going to be, they could be P elements, that could be strong elements, that could be EM elements, that could be anything else. We're going to go ahead and use the star sign. So we're going to be selecting everything that is coming after that H6 inside the description of auto list layouts. And the initial state that all of this is going to have is display none. And since we have this as the initial state, then logically what's going to happen is that once we click on that read bio, because that display is going to be toggled, then now if the initial state is hidden, once we click on it, everything is going to show. And now that we have this part of the functionality all set up, what we can do is just take a couple of minutes to style that read bio link that we have here. So I'm just going to go ahead and target that through the same selector that we have before. And then we can just have a little bit of fun here. So let's go ahead and add maybe a, let's just change the font size real quick. So I think I'm going to set this to something like 14 pixels. And then here, if you want to alter the color or the phone family, you could go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and set this to text transform uppercase. I think I'm going to change the cursor as well, because right now you can see that this doesn't really look that clickable because it just turns the 
like the little cursor, it just uses the automatic cursor there. So I'm just going to go ahead and change that to pointer. And now if I go over it, you can see that it's actually a clickable thing. So it just makes a little bit more sense UX wise. And I think it would be a good idea to add like a little bit of a border to the bottom. So let's go ahead and do that one pixel solid. And then I think I have the blue color in here. So I'm just going to grab that. There we go. We have a little bit of a line there. So that also makes it a little bit more obvious that there's something that may be hidden after this. And then what I want to do in here is add a little bit of a plus sign so that it's again, even more obvious that this is something clickable and that there, this is a drop down. So to be able to add that, I'm going to be using an after pseudo element, because if we use a pseudo element, we're going to be able to have the option of changing what that pseudo element looks like when the drop down is open because of the class that we added through the script. So I'm going to get started with the initial state by targeting this same H6 that we've been dealing with all along. And then I'm going to be adding an after pseudo element to it. All I want to add in here is a little plus sign. So that's what I'm going to have in here. You can see how that shows up in here, like right next to the text, but I actually want to place it on this side. So I think the easiest way to do this is by using Flexbox on the H6 so that we can separate things and we can have the little plus sign all the way over here to the right side. So I'm going to go back really quickly here to the H6 snippet, and then I'm going to set this to a display flex container. I'm going to set things to align item center just to make sure that everything is centered horizontally. And then I'm going to be using in here justify content space between. And this is just going to separate that little plus sign from the text over here. Now, of course, if you wanted to make that plus sign a little bit bigger, you could go ahead and just modify it in here inside the pseudo element snippet. So if I were to set this to something like, I don't know, like 30 pixels, you can see how that changes in size. We have still everything aligned through the center because of the align item center property that we have in here. But I think that's a little bit big for what I want. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep it the same size as the read bio. And then for the final trick, let's go ahead and change this little sign once the drop down is open. So remember that we added that class of open drop down to the script. So if we click on this, the class is going to get applied or disappear from this H6 depending on whether that class is already present or not. So in this case, if we take a look at the inspect element tool here again, you can see that right now in the initial state, that class isn't really applied to the H6. But once we click on it, we're going to see how that class shows up here for the H6. So once this open drop down class shows up for that H6, I want that sign to change to something else. So what we're going to do is we're going to reuse this same snippet from before, but we're going to target the H6 when that class is present. So we're going to be adding it in here, open drop down. And so now once the H6 has that class of open drop down, which means that somebody clicked on it, then the pseudo element for it is going to change the content property. So here I just want to add a little dash sign or like a negative sign. And then you're going to see that now if I have the drop down open, we have that dash. And then if I close it, we have the plus sign. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And then if we open things up, you can see how those read bio look great over here. Everything works correctly. And then of course, if we take a look here, uh, mobile, we're going to see how everything works the same way. And that's everything that I have for you today. I really hope that you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on future customizations just like today's, and I will see you next time.